All right, we are back and we are going to move on to our next speaker, but I want to just let you know what you have coming up. If you have to leave, let go ahead and do that, but come back. Um, I am going to be sharing at the end a guided uh, taking you into your Akashic Records. So please reach out to me if you're interested in the Intuition Awakening course that I have, but also starting next week, we have the Intuitive Readings Body Scan and Akashic Records Certification. Um, it's a unique combination of things, but the way that I teach is you must become, you must shift your vibration. And all of our speakers have been sharing that, right? That you you shift your vibration, you you do your side of the infinity symbol instead of the businesses or the relationship. I would take what Linda said about the in, infinity symbol and use it in everything in your life. You're here. How are you connecting to what's coming? So, uh, and when you do that, you get this class, but you could also just buy this class if you would like to. And this is going to be in November. Everything's in the shop, shop.nanakasha.com. And um, of course, if you're finding this on YouTube, we'll have a link below, but if you want the, the bonuses and all the different gifts and whatever, uh, go ahead and register over there. We'll make sure to get that to you. Okay, good. So now we have our next speaker and I'm so excited because talk about how beautiful we've had this expanded view from somebody who works with the angels and who had a, a, a child with a particular challenge that opened up her spiritual path, right? And then we had Shelly who came from a lot of trauma and that opened the doors to her Akashic records and to her healing um, to now be able to help people reconnect to their divinity. And then we had Linda and she was sharing with us that your business has a soul, that it comes from uh, the Akashic records to find you because you're perfect for it. And now we're going to talk with Baljeet Rayat, and she's going to talk to us about how healing your sexual energy in the Akashic Records and how it aligns you to your purpose and your gifts. So we had a wonderful little conversation yesterday. I'm super excited about some of the things that came up. She's an Akashic Records consultant and teacher, intuitive mentor on reclaiming sexual sovereignty, sacred geometry, soul artist, I love it, and a conscious DJ, and I added, and soon to be a sexologist. Committed to raising the vibration of humanity, Bajit has worked with thousands of people worldwide to uplevel their lives by uncovering the truths of who they are to the core and creating profound results in their businesses and relationships. She believes everything in the world is energy and getting to the root of desire causes a powerful ripple that spans all areas of life. And you can find her again at her name. You'll notice that this is what we used to teach. Uh, my, my beautiful partner uh, used to make websites that we used to help our, um, let me get my plug back here, uh, help my clients that I would help with their businesses and their, their inner Akashic records contracts and issues around money and all that kind of stuff that we do. Um, around that. And we used to say, just get your name, just get your name, just get your name.com. Right. So, uh, and she has this beautiful gift for you that we will send to you. So if you register here or you already got it, unlock your sacral power energy activation. So let's see if we can find Baljeet. Hello. Hello. Where are you? <laughs> uh, uh, there you are. <laughs> I have so many people. It's so hard. Let's see. Can you ask to unmute? Here we go. Hey. Hello. Hi. So wonderful to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I love how um, you entered the space that got vacated and I was looking around. I wonder who's going to show up and you step in and then you told me a little story about you were supposed to do something else today too. And that opened up. So it's like a chess, a little game of Akashic check chess. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so funny how that worked out. So thank you for having me here. And I'm just honored to just be here and be with everybody. Yeah. Awesome. So of course, this is a hot topic and it's a, it's a sexy topic and it's a fascinating topic. It's also one that it's triggers a lot of fear, resistance and uh, avoidance and all of that. So um, share again, like you were sharing with me about, you know, your journey into Akashic records and healing and following your purpose. And then how these little clues kept showing up as to like the specialty within the Akashic records and, and the healing work you did. 
Yeah. Um, so my background years ago, back in 2003 to 2009, I spent um, my entire time in the architectural industry. I was actually an architectural technologist. Um, and then in the early 2000s, I, you know, I was partying a lot, going to raves, and I grew up in a very strict East Indian upbringing. Uh, there was a lot of fear. So I was trying to rebel to find freedom and what that thing I'm supposed to be doing. And at that time, my parents were like, we're going to get married and this is what's going to happen. And I was like, no, it's, it's not. Um, so I did everything the opposite and long story short, I ended up with, uh, anxiety. I had a panic disorder and I had depression and, um, I was on medication, antidepressants at the time. And, Long story short, by 2005, I knew it was time for me to wean off the antidepressants because I was like, I still feel disconnected from my emotions. I still feel lost, even though I'm getting paid well. I live in Toronto and live in the sex in the city life, um, but still was feeling this lack of purpose and lack of connections. Not only that, my relationships weren't really going well either. Um, so I had a homeopathic doctor that I was working with and a naturopathic doctor that helped me wean off the antidepressants. And I had a relapse and, you know, at the time of what we call a healing crisis, um, I now realize working in the Akashic Records, we don't need to manifest a healing crisis in order to validate that we are shifting. We can shift energy in a nanosecond, but at that time, I did not know that and I didn't really understand what energy was so I was purging all the issues out of my tissues and um was in the state of I think I want to leave my body I wasn't too sure so I remember sitting out on the balcony in Toronto um, of my apartment and it was my first conscious um letter to um the universe saying okay god like tell me what I need to do. Am I supposed to leave my body or am I supposed to do something? And literally in the next day I heard, I actually auditorily heard my intuition, which was like the very first time. And, um, I heard energy healing and I was like, what's that? And I Googled it. And then I came across the Akashic records and long story short, I, met someone, my former mentor, Jennifer Longmore, uh, she's wonderful. She taught me the Akashic Records, but she also uh, started doing sessions on me and it was just a game changer. And my life did a 180 where I moved across Canada. Um, so then eventually I left my nine to five job and turned um, my part-time healing business into a full-time business and to mentorship programs back in 2009. And I noticed for myself, I was still clearing a lot around relationships and also being a person of color, like the kind of um, energy that I, I still had some trauma of like being a person of color working in the architectural industry because I was asked out by old married men uh, to have mm -hmm. an affair with me. And there was something energetically that was kind of like a past life interference of uh, being a courtesan and whatnot that kept bleeding through the workplace. And I was like, why are these white married men asking me to have an affair? So I really went into my records and, and cleared that, but then it invited even more um, people to um, talk about wanting to not only know what their purpose is and their gifts are, uh, but in addition, feeling disconnected from their sexuality and and also things not happening in the bedroom and I always say whatever happens in the bedroom also also happens in business and um I would say since even when uh the pandemic started in 2020 uh more you know souls awakening coming forward were like okay I'm about to have a divorce, so we need to fix this. And I'm like, oh, okay, what do you want to talk about? And they're like, sex. And I'm like, okay. So more people, the floodgates just started to open around sexuality or just being like, I want to know who I am. I want to know my own sexual identity. And 
we look at sex as like uh, a side dish, but really sexual energy should be our main dish. It's part of our creativity. It's our life force. And with societal programming, um, governmental, religious, parental programming, cultural programming, um, transgenerational programming, uh, there's so much oppression and misconceptions around what sexual energy is. And if you were to look at, you know, what society may have taught you in the past, or even like pornography, for example, and um, have separated uh, sexual energy or may have treated it as a low order energy versus something that is deeply connected to your spiritual self. And when we realize we can release that shame, that guilt, that judgment, um, that oppression or whatever projections that we may have put onto our sexual energy, we're able to connect that to our truth, but also come into our body um, and feel safe in our body, feel safe to be seen, feel safe to be visible, which is part of aligning to your purpose, right? Um, it's hard to really act on your gifts when you're not really in your body. Um, whether you've gone through any macro sexual trauma or micro trauma, um, it could be as simple as someone just making a comment that really affected you. Um, and that's still a big thing to really look at and heal. So um, I'm currently now taking a, a Tibetan Tantra practitioner program because my guides were like, now you got to add this in. And I was like, okay, uh, to also become a sexologist as well, uh, to really understand the anatomy and understand the nervous system of what's going on for someone when they're going through trauma and um, how to work in the records as well to heal that. I love that combination. Right. Thank you. I, that's my favorite thing, you know, is going on my 30 some year path of like, ooh, I'm drawn to this and then adding some element of it in until you have this, your own unique space and, and things yeah. that, you know, and, and how you didn't have to know the end result and you're still evolving, right, of your purpose or anything. It was going along that path, watching each step of the way and then noticing, wow, look, I'm having all these clients come ask about this, you know? And so it's like speaking to you, guiding you forward. Uh, so do you find more people come because they wanna find their purpose versus acknowledging there's a sexual aspect or fear of or, or mm -hmm. anything in that? It used to be that way. And then honestly, the more that I started to embody the fact that this is the calling, it was like, you know, the mirror, right? Yeah. So then more people are like, all right, I'm ready to talk about it. Let's talk about this. And then I want to connect to my purpose. <laughs> it was like, I needed to do that within myself first to be yeah. seen to facilitate that and be like, hey, you're safe. Because if I wasn't doing that, then why would someone else feel safe to be seen that way too. So now uh, more than ever, I have a lot of people that are, you know, single in marriages that are just like, Hey, I'm, I'm ready to face this because it's, it's now getting to me. And I know this deeply is connected to whatever my next step is supposed to be. It's almost like they know that they need to heal this in order to understand whatever their next step is on their journey. Yeah. Yeah. So give us some examples of how this works, because it became very clear to me when we were talking that, yes, it's great, you know, that we're in an age when you can say, I don't know if I'm an undeclared sex or I'm a this or that or whatever I want to call myself. Right. Um, so that we have that fluid gender thing happening very, very fast and really getting acknowledged and being accepted and in so many different ways in such a fast compared to my lifetime of watching other stuff to shift, right? And so we're seeing that on the outside, like you were seeing that in your business and then the patterns being reflected outside, right? More people waking up and saying, oh, you know, I, I, I had this beautiful client. Um, I did these sessions this summer called Magnetize Your Beloved. And yeah. they, people, some people were showing up and saying, I want self-love. 
I want to magnetize myself, right? Or, mm -hmm. oh, I'm already in a beautiful relationship. But you know what? We're older. Maybe we're not going to be great lovers again, but we could still be lovers. And I want that closeness. I don't want to waste any more time with he, she, this, that, is my butt too big? Is this, you know, like yeah. I don't care anymore. I want to have that connection again. So yeah. for me, and I'm sure with you, share with us a little bit about what you're seeing, the new patterns and how people are opening up. Yeah, it's so wild. Like, um, you know, many of the blocks, and sometimes people don't even realize that they're carrying some form of sexual trauma or just a sexual block with their, their energy and uh, with their sexual energy in particular. Um, so when I go into the Akashic records, I'll just be shown. Um, so for example, I had a woman that is um, a lesbian and never experienced an orgasm and she's um, mid-age and in a relationship. And I was like, okay, so went in the records and and it just so turned out to be part of a religious programming um, that got passed down through a parent. And she felt like if she connected as a lesbian to her sexual energy, she would be committing a sin. She wouldn't be accepted by God, G-O-D. Um, and that she, so she would, and this is where the trauma response would come in. She would go into a place of fawning and fawning. So we have different trauma responses. We have fight or flight. Uh, you know, we can react um, or we can go out of our body, disassociate, or we can shut down um, and not do anything and freeze. Or we can fawn, which is almost like trying to make sure all your external realities is taken care of so that you feel safe. And so I saw her making sure her partner, her wife was good and everything else was good. Bills are paid. And I was like, well, no wonder you're not, you're not taking space for yourself. You're really avoiding this, this like connecting to you. And so we had to go deeper into her understanding her, um, her safety mechanism. And we have safety mechanisms of where, where we want to avoid something. Um, even I can guarantee someone is probably like eating something right now on the call because this might be a little uncomfortable because we are just like, oh, this is intense. Like we know that when we're about to shift energy, um, there's resistance that is bound to come up. So for her, like connecting to pleasure, it's like there's such a deep fear and shame around that. She didn't even realize. She just thought that was normal. And I was like, no, no, no. So we went in and did some releasing around the belief systems of what it means to connect to pleasure as a, a lesbian woman. Another example, um, you know, it could be someone that, and religious programming has been coming up a lot um, and cultural programming. Uh, I've had a lot of people that have been like, I was raised, it doesn't matter what religion, but um, that if I connect to this energy, my sexual energy, um, I'm considered lower than, or it's sinful or it's bad. And so there's this immense guilt and shame. And so when they feel that, then how that translate in their business or just them wanting to connect to their gifts is that they avoid their creative gifts. And so they end up working the nine to five job or job that actually doesn't relate to their creativity. Um, and they're doing that 24 seven and they're really into their family. And so there's no time for, for self. So the pattern, um, a lot that I've noticed is this avoidance of really connecting to self, because what does it mean to connect to myself? What would it mean to connect to, to pleasure? And what would it mean to connect to my sexual energy? If I was to, you know, for myself personally, I started DJing, like that was such a big thing and making music and, and coming out of that and, and being in, you know, doing festivals and other things, but it's, there's also this deep feeling of uh, rawness when you're sharing your gifts and also, you know, with the past life interference, perhaps too, 
you may fear that you would be persecuted for being super visible, right? So there are many uh, factors and the factors are religious, cultural, governmental, societal, parental. There could be non-earthbound uh, energies, uh, alien implants, um, negative alien implants. Uh, work with, I work with a lot of galactic energies as well. Um, so sometimes I'm shown non-earthbound energies that interfere uh, for whatever agenda that they may have or it has <laughs> that we may not fully understand because some things go beyond what our human brain can understand. Um, so I'm able to kind of see that within the line of that person. Well, and, and it's so powerful to realize that um, you have these connections, right? So some of our earlier speakers were talking about vibrating to a previous life or another life or a, uh, of that being that you know, yeah. is whole or is accepting themselves or is, is realizing I deserve pleasure. Um, and I think what's imp what is interesting about what you focus on and the sacral center especially is it's where the secrets and the shame are, right? It's also where the power and the creativity are and that ability to create being not okay in so many cultures. You, you shouldn't make more money than your parents or you shouldn't be think you're better than your dad or you, you know, whatever it was. And do you see other levels, since you said like you're working a lot with the galactics and stuff, do you see other levels as somebody's personal Akashic records, shift, change, reconnect, rewire, whatever, that ripple or that connection to like the planet releasing those sexual yeah. abuse traumas or fear of receiving or being good enough? A hundred percent. You know, as we understand working in the records is like our, you know, our expression of our soul here in this physical body is only one fragment of our soul. Um, so we have many fragments and all the other dimensions. We have access to all the other dimensions. So our oversoul is communicating with our, our human self and is like, hey, you need to heal this so we can go back and heal all the other dimensions and other realities that are, you know, what's happening. And it's just like a global thing. Um, and sexuality is such a big thing. I feel that um, there's been so much um, deep-seated uh, oppression around sexual energy, um, where it's disempowered people to feel disconnected from it on purpose, because that is the thing that is actually going to bring world peace. If we were to really, I mean, you can already see what's, what's going on in the world, like in Iran, for example, um, like the the gender, the, the women fighting for their rights and, um, and their own sexual identity, even in India, like it's, it's happening already where it um, doesn't matter what gender, but people are rising to claim their right to their sexual sovereignty. And sexual sovereignty is about um, reclaiming your sexual energy. And what does that mean to you and the sacredness? And because of that, it does create a ripple effect because you're not only healing the planet, but you're also healing your ancestors as well. Um, and it's been profound with my personal journey um, where I feel I used to never really connect to my roots, but now because of the healing, it's like, I want to connect to my roots. I like, even after this, I'm going to make Indian food. I don't know why, but I just put it out. I was just like, I yeah. Need to, yeah. <laughs> I was just like, I need to do this um, because I know it's like, I'm hearing my ancestors as well. And I'm hearing my galactic tribe and they're like, yeah, let's do this. So you are healing multidimensionally. You are a multidimensional healer. Everybody on this call is like, you know, when you heal yourself, you're healing generations and it does create a ripple effect um, with everyone around you. How do you see that when you work in the records like this event, we were talking in the beginning, like all of these people coming together and the imprint we're making into the Akasha right now. 
because of this gathered energy and the, and the power of having multiple people here and how it's then available for anybody to access. But then mm -hmm. if we heal out, like we might say to the past, maybe to the future, down a timeline that is mm -hmm. no longer relevant to us, no longer um, optimal for us. Yeah. The way that I've been shown in the records is um, with healing that is actually, we're all kind of coming back to being able to connect to our gifts and our talents, our innate gifts and talents. And almost everyone that I've been speaking to, even like on sessions and even outside of sessions, is that everyone is searching to express something. And it's a gift. It's a sacred gift. It's like this sacred gift has a frequency. And that frequency carries um, codes. It carries energy, a specific frequency. And that's how we go back to our own soul blueprint, our blueprint of our soul. Hence, um, in architecture, I used to do blueprints of buildings. But of course, that had to be my background for me to understand the blueprint of a soul, right? Yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah. And so um, what I've been shown is that everyone on this planet has a unique frequency and we all have programming. And as we um, transmute any of the limiting programming, especially around our sexual energy, we are then able to connect to our gifts and our gifts carry a very uh, potent frequency um, that just even goes beyond uh, sound. It's it's like non-auditory and it just creates this, the way that I've been shown is like a wave of energy throughout the planet. If we were to really connect with that. I mean, if you really to look at a lot of the entertainment industry and now people are more conscious of it and are aware, even um, you know with TV shows, with music, there's a lot of subliminal programming and the subliminal programming is basically programming your mind um, to be negative and to um, do negative things, right? It's a way of control um, and manipulation. So as soon as you realize how to use your own gift for the highest good of all, you're actually shifting the frequency of the planet. And the more people start to recognize that of like, oh, I can actually shift my own frequency. I can do it through baking. I can do it through, I'm going to make Indian food afterwards. <laughs> it's just shifting the frequency. Anybody can do this as long as they put that intention, like energy follows intent. Um, but really acknowledging that then, um, then just taking in all the subliminal programming. I think that's that's such a huge thing. But that was how um, on the side note of like doing the sacred geometric images, the soul blueprints that I do as well. Um, I did a future progression on myself um, in the Akashic Records and met my future self on the, the galactic realm. And I was speaking with my, my guides and they said, look at everybody on this planet. It's it's full of subliminal programming. We are being programmed um, to lose our power, defer our power. So when I came back um, to the now of um, doing the future progression, I was like, oh, and hence this is why I've tied um, sexuality and power together and understanding what does power mean? A lot of people think that power either means control or manipulation, but that's not, that's just control <laughs> manipulation. So if we understand power is actually us being embodied in our truth, there's a, a frequency and power. So imagine reclaiming your sexual power, sexual sovereignty. And that's why what I call sexual sovereignty is you're reclaiming all of that um, in the best way possible that you're meant to in this lifetime and being able to emanate that. Yeah. And when you have that idea of sovereignty or freedom, you know, you're, you're not controlled by or affected by uh, things outside of what's optimal for you. Right. Uh, what I call yeah. my, your soul signature frequency. You're saying like you have your own frequency, the closer you vibrate back to that functional perfection for you the more there is ease and grace, despite the fact that someone might die and you grieve or, you know, things unfold, you have that freedom in 
all the areas of your life, right? Yeah. What about pleasure? Talk about pleasure a little bit because it's, you know, guilty pleasure. We have that, oh, it's a guilty pleasure. Oh, I'm going to have a chocolate. I actually don't like chocolate. But <laughs> I like cacao. <laughs> I like the only woman who doesn't like chocolate. Um, I'm a cacao girl now, though. I do have my cacao because I live in my LA. <laughs> uh, so from my heart. <laughs> um, but that, you know, there's so much of this programming you're talking about. So I was raised in the Midwest by good, hardworking people who said, work hard, pay your bills on time, work harder, suffer, then maybe you'll be good enough one day. And so, um, you know, all very loving and, and everything, but inside of that very restricted idea of really yeah. never, ever reaching a point where you deserve. Yeah, never reaching a point, like, especially if you have your own business, anybody else have this? Oh, I didn't make a million dollars yet, or I didn't do this yet. I didn't do that yet. I can't take time off. You know, and I don't do that anymore. But I think that there's a huge amount of programming around like, who do you think you are? I don't know about anybody else, but I get who do you think you are to be happy to have what you want? <laughs> Stuff like that. Yeah, the allowance, the willingness and the allowance. So an, a great way that I love um, asking uh, in the records is on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the highest, how connected am I to pleasure? How much pleasure am I allowing at this in this moment? And you can ask yourself this every day and check in with yourself and allow the first number to come up. If you feel like you're answering from your head, just take a nice deep big breath in and answer it again from the heart. And then from there, let's just say, if you get anything less than a seven, that's usually the, the point of like, okay, well, we need to shift something. And it's like, okay, let's just say I got a five. How, how can I make this a 10? You know, what do I need to release? What do I need to shift in order to allow my pleasure to come to a 10? Um, and so this is where working in the records and the Akashic records is really valuable because you're able to pinpoint um, the misconception of pleasure. Uh, you know, in your case, uh, you talked about, you know, how you were raised and, and same for me, like how I was raised, like had to be a good girl, you know, um, especially being an East Indian girl, like having pleasure or just coming first as a, a female was not really like a big thing. So I never allowed myself to exceed to uh, a five. I, I wanted to just stay at a five. I'm like, no, I'm good. You know, no attention here, right? So if you feel like you have that, then you really want to look at that because, and then some people might be like, well, I feel like every time I allow pleasure and attention, I get persecuted or people, I get bullied or um, I receive a lot of jealousy right? A lot of competition. So then you want to look at where that root cause, where does that come from? Um, and for everybody, it's different. It also connects to your nervous system. Remember how we talked about the trauma? Do we have a fight or flight response? Do we disassociate when we want to connect with pleasure? If you feel like, you know, you're just at a five, um, with pleasure just in business and just allowing yourself to celebrate yourself, you're going to see how that reflects in your relationship. If you're in an intimate relationship or just even self-pleasure, you may feel like you're just doing a quick masturbation everywhere <laughs> when really it's like, how can I allow myself to receive? Um, so yeah. And that's, that's a real, and even food, if it's like, how can I really allow myself to really receive pleasure through the food that I make or the food that I am receiving right now? And you're going to notice your body will respond differently. Um, but that also creates a ripple effect within, you know, working with your clients or just being with people. So Yes, I know. What would we be if we weren't dissatisfied all the time having to try to find something else, right? That, that, that constant wheel, that hamster wheel, you know, that is just being happy every day. We go, wow, I'm so happy. <laughs> my life is so good, isn't it? I know. It's so good. Oh my gosh. I just yeah. walk around like that. Um, and is everything perfect? No, but it, it, but it is. So um, you're okay with a couple questions? Yeah. Okay, good. So, um, 
Yeah, you can, if somebody asks about getting your help, yeah, you can go to Belgi, we're giving you her information, you can get her bonus, you can talk to her about um, working together. Uh, Destine said, I'm feeling a faucet of myself really being triggered with this talk, I was uh, a facet, I think it's supposed to mean, a facet of myself really being triggered with this talk. Uh, I was wondering, what do you sense with this? And I would like to know how to connect with her. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it's a very much like Justine, I can really feel the energy. It's like, <laughs> just get this away from me. Um, it's like, I don't want to talk about this. I'm gonna, um, just give me a second. I'm just going to tune in here. Uh, if I have your permission, Destine. Just type in yes, if I have your permission. I always like to ask people's permission before I. Thanks. Yes, please. Thank you. Um, okay. Oh, okay. So as soon as I like went in, I felt like you were just like underwater and feeling like overwhelmed with the energy and overwhelmed with the emotion and the connection of sexual energy and what that means for you. And um, the word overwhelm keeps coming forward. It's like feeling like it's almost like I saw you just going underneath the water and just getting lost in it um, and just being like, I don't know where to go. I'm just grasping at things. Um, it feels like, um, you know, I want to ask you, what's this energy with the overwhelm and also pinpoint where that is connecting to your upbringing, but it also feels like there's some kind of interdimensional interference as well. Um, it almost feels very, uh, almost like Lemurian-like. I don't normally talk about Atlantis and Lemuria unless, because um, this feels really deep. It feels very, very big. Um, and, and this is also translating with having attention put on to you around expressing your gifts because you do have a very creative side um but you are very um like in avoidance of being seen so let me know if that makes sense yes that makes sense that makes perfect sense and i do feel overwhelmed but i don't really fully understand why so i'm kind of sensing that there's some trauma with this aspect of me but I don't really know what understand. I don't understand what it is. And I know I'm just like all day I've just been crying and I keep calling up all of me into this sacred space so that they can receive the healing. And then I'll go out of this space. And then I feel like the healing, like I'm there, there's anger and they're mad at me for allowing this. And you know what I mean? I'm just, so I'm trying to heal myself, but there's parts of me that are not wanting to go there. Mm -hmm. It feels like. Mm -hmm. And you're right. I feel some definite, some intergalactic, uh, definitely some interference of some sort <clears throat> for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to recommend for you to, you know, book a session with anyone, but it's almost like you got to reclaim your fragments back into your body of being, you know, here in this human realm, because it feels like, um, with the sensitivity to energy, it's almost like you can feel your other lifetimes and there's a bit of bleed through. Yeah. Um, and um, you just need to really anchor yourself in your body so that you have healthier boundaries within that, if that makes sense. We've cleared timeline bleed throughs a couple times. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's the thing. I feel like, I feel like I'm doing this multiple times and I just mm -hmm. actually want to come to an end of it you know what I mean I don't want to keep healing the same things mm -hmm. but I do yeah um yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna check in on you because how long is it gonna take for you to make your Indian dinner no, I'm just, uh -huh. <laughs> I know. 
<laughs> um, and true, I'm mm-hmm. going to ask you a question before we get to the next one. And you're going to tell me the first number. So truth on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the highest, how much of you really wants to be in your body right now? <sighs> it was high. It was like nine. Okay. But I, I don't know if you meant like, like, I feel like there are many parts of me that don't want to be in the body and I struggle to be in the body. Like I constantly have to call myself back. So that's when we need to clear is the interference of what's because I keep seeing your energy swimming out of your body. Yeah, I'm like calling it back. Like, come on, come, yeah. on, come on. And that's all. So we just need to see what's going on and what that mechanism is. There could be like um, and then what's your background, your cultural background? Native ancestry. American. Yeah, that's what is being shown. So a lot of healing through your lineage to feel safe in your body. That's yeah. really okay. Oh, good. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much for that. Thank you, you Nan. I appreciate it. Thank you, that. sweetie. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. You know, I think everybody needs to acknowledge that we're in such a fast evolution right now that you anything you're experiencing personally is also being magnified by you know the planet and others uh, especially things like this you know uh, being a woman being a person of color being figuring out your gender or not wanting a gender um it's all about identity right and ending the identities that we were told we had to live inside of. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of freedom that um, like with Justine, what I was seeing was just sit peacefully in the middle of your, I always see like sit down in your sacral bones, like a little Buddha, you know, sitting there because you're doing this, right? She's in this constant chasing and pulling it back and wanting it this way and needing it that way. And that centering, centering mm-hmm. right there. And I think um, Baljeet's sacral meditation will be really powerful too. Mm-hmm. To be mm-hmm. Coming here and watch the energy. It's still going to be going like that, right? But you don't have to be in it. You could be watching it. Okay. Wonderful. Well, I think we have, we have more questions. We could talk with you more and more. We're going to have to have you back on the show. And <laughs> um, but uh we need to move on to Lisa and into our Akashic Records journey. So uh, what would you like to leave us with? And thank you, by the way. Thank you so much for having me here. Again, it's an honor. And um, let's leave with the pleasure practice. Um, so really checking with you and yourself every day, if you can, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the highest, how connected am I to pleasure and how can I shift that even just that one little thing will really make a big shift and also making sure you have practices to really ground in your body I can't stress that in enough especially during these times we really need that yeah beautiful thank you you so much sweetie take care let's stay in touch lots of love lots and lots of thank yous pouring in and uh, wonderful you know it's so fun to, to come and to, uh, like Karen said, thank you. So you communicate beautifully, you know, having these different perspectives, seeing diff- people's different stories, um, how they trigger something within you and how we're all coming to a place where it's time to be present with a, are these emotions that, you know, we used to, were told to, to suppress them, right? And then we were told to just fix them or to take a pill <laughs> or to work hard or to do something to numb it. And, and now we have to move into acceptance. So several of the speakers have talked about that idea of being with what is. Um, I call it acceptance because on the scale of consciousness, when you reach the state of acceptance, it's where you truly take your power back in the sense that your emotional body lets go or forgives. So then you meet harmony and transcendence and compassion and so on. Um, so wonderful. All right, great. So now we have uh, two more. It is a very important and sacred topic. It's, it, it really inspired me to, I was starting to get visions and downloads during her talk about really bringing this topic, whether it's a sex, money, self-love, um, you know, whatever that is, and the sacred feminine, the two have been separated. So a lot of what we've talked about, it affects everybody. It affects men too. But if you're in a feminine body and you have 
the sense of not being safe in your body, that's a common thing because that's what we have seen. That's the game that we have played. So everything we've learned from all the speakers talking about, you know, uh, connecting with your future self, connecting with those parts of you that already have the power, already know what to do, connecting with the parts that are lighting up to help you guide you through this dark little path on your journey or whatever is happening next. And that we're never alone. But in order to rise into these other states and really get clearer and clearer and clearer, we want to go and expand ourselves into a place where we feel that it's safe to be who we are, that we don't have to be attached to that resistance, to that fear that's encoded really into habits, right? Mind, body, and uh, emotions as well. Okay, good. So we're going to now have an amazing experience with 